Volodymyr Zelensky. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Tuesday said that Russian President Vladimir Putin doesn't want any peace, and his goal is to destroy us. Speaking in Kiev alongside his Danish counterpart, Zelensky said that Putin's goal is to continue the war for, as long as possible, to create, chaos in the world. 1,000 days, I think it's enough to understand that Putin doesn't want any peace. He wants to destroy Ukraine, not only, and others, some other countries of NATO, he added. Zelensky also criticized the joint declaration made by the G20 countries in Brazil. The G20 declaration highlighted the human suffering in Ukraine while calling for peace, but without naming Russia. I think, today G20 countries, they're sitting today in Brazil, did they did they say something? Nothing. Nothing strong. Zelensky also commented on Russia's revised nuclear doctrine, urging the world to put a strong answer on the table to deter Russia potentially using nuclear weapons in the future. Putin on Tuesday formally lowered the threshold for Russia's use of its nuclear weapons, a move that follows U.S. President Joe Biden's decision to let Ukraine strike targets inside Russian territory with American-supplied longer-range missiles. And their strategy, I think, today, G20 countries, they're sitting today in Brazil. Did they, did they say something? Nothing. Nothing strong. This is the answer. So what strategy can be if even G20 countries don't have any strong strategy? So our strategy is to be strong. And if when Putin even speaking, begin to speak about nuclear weapon, the world has to put answer on the table, really strong answer on the table, what they will do if Putin will use something like this weapon or other things. Вибачте, без зайвих деталей. У України є далекобійні можливості, у України є далекобійні дрони свого власного виробництва, у нас тепер є довгий Нептун, і не один, і тепер у нас є Атакамс. І ми все це будемо використовувати. Прес-конференція добігла кінця. Дякую. A spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin said Tuesday that the doctrine on nuclear deterrence was revised to stay in line with the current situation. The Russian Federation reserves the right to use nuclear weapons in case of aggression with the use of conventional weapons against it and or against the Republic of Belarus as a member state of the Union state, which causes a critical threat to both their sovereignty and or territorial integrity, said Peskov. Aggression against the Russian Federation by any non-nuclear state with the participation or support of a nuclear state is considered as a joint attack, he added. Putin signed a new doctrine Tuesday that lowers the threshold for using nuclear weapons. Putin's endorsement of the new nuclear deterrent policy comes as the conflict in Ukraine marks the 1,000-day milestone since he sent troops into Ukraine on February 24, 2022. It follows President Joe Biden's decision to let Ukraine strike targets inside Russia with U.S.-supplied longer-range missiles. The signing of the doctrine, which says that any massive aerial attack on Russia could trigger a nuclear response, reflects Putin's readiness to tap the country's nuclear arsenal to force the West to back down as Moscow is pressing a slow-moving offensive in Ukraine. Агрессия с применением обычного оружия против нее 
России или Республики Беларусь, как государства участника союзного государства, создающие критическую угрозу их суверенитету и, или территориальной целостности. Да, об этом говорит. Значит, агрессия против Российской Федерации со стороны любого неядерного государства с участием или при поддержке ядерного государства рассматривается как их совместное нападение. Это тоже очень важный пара. Israeli airstrikes targeted a neighborhood in the heart of Lebanon's capital late Monday evening, slamming into an area near the parliament, several embassies, and the UN headquarters, according to Lebanon's state-run national news agency. Lebanon's health ministry said at least five people were killed and 31 wounded. An Associated Press reporter at the scene in Beirut described significant casualties on the street as ambulance sirens echoed through the area. On Tuesday, residents and officials accessed the damage. Since late September, Israel has dramatically escalated its bombardment of Lebanon, vowing to cripple the militant group Hezbollah and end its barrages into Israel. Over the past year, more than 3,500 people have been killed in Lebanon by Israeli fire 80% of them in the past month Lebanon's health ministry says. The current wave of conflict gripping the Middle East began when the Palestinian militant group Hamas stormed from Gaza into Israel on October 7, 2023, killing some 1,200 people, mostly civilians, and abducting around 250. Hezbollah began firing into Israel on October 8, 2023, in solidarity with Hamas. Israel's war in Gaza has killed over 43,800 Palestinians, according to local health authorities. The officials do not distinguish between militants and civilians but say most of those killed are women and children. The fighting has left 77 people dead in Israel, including 31 soldiers. مارق من هون امبارح ما في خمس دقايق بيني وبينهم وصلت على الدرج وطلعت الدبة أول دبة وثاني دبة ما لقيت إلا عائلتي حملت حالها ونزلت على الطريق ونزلوا على المريسة وهم من الروح الله بيعلم من الضاحية على بيروت عم يضربوا المهجرين لحونا على بيروت عم يضربوا المهجرين ما عم بيخلوا حدا ما عم بيخلوا حدا والله يحمي حزب الله <تصفيق>